Welcome everybody to today's webinar. We're just going to give it a go. Some people will still be dropping in. We have 45 minutes with each other. We're going to talk for I'm going to talk for around 25 minutes and then we have enough time for for questions. Um, so let's give it a go. So basically I guess you would all agree that universities are part of the problems that we have within society. Issues like climate change, students, graduates who don't care about the environment or social responsibility, or then electronic waste. So these are all problems that universities contribute through their education, research and operations. They're the same But at the same time, universities are also part of the solution. So the UN um, finished the Sustainable Development Goals, set, outlining 17 goals on big actions that humanity needs to take in order to allow people to thrive within the 21st century. And there are lots of topics that universities can contribute on through their education, for instance, teaching people about poverty, uh, through their research, doing research on affordable energy or then their own operations, finding ways to reduce their own footprint. And then of course community engagement as an important way of how a university can help local communities to become more sustainable. So here the, the 17 Sustainable Development Goals is the big action framework of how we through Jubility understand sustainability and how we see that universities can contribute through it through the education, research and operations. But Universities are on different phases in that change process. So some institutions are still defensive. They say, okay, so why are the SDGs, why is sustainability relevant for us? Others are compliant to say, okay, we engage on these issues because the government says so. We stick to environmental laws because simply a law and we need to do it. Others are more take a more managerial approach. So they start small pilot projects here and, and there in order to experiment with this topic in order to get going on these things. And then there are institutions, still very few, that are leading on the topic. They say, okay, sustainability, this is what we are all about. This is our core identity. And many of you today will be at different phases in that change process. When you look at your institution, you might see, okay, sometimes we are a bit more on the compliance side, sometimes we are more managerial. Basically, the promise of this presentation today is wherever you are in the change process, um, with this experimentation, with this presentation today, we want to help you to take the next step, so for instance, to move from compliance to managerial or from managerial to strategic. And what we will explore today is the idea of the student-led sustainability hubs. So we promise that you will get inspired today and then the follow-up actions that you can take or might want to take. So if you say, okay, that's an interesting model, um, but we are already doing something similar, maybe there is a way on how I can learn from the Green Office model in order to reorganize the existing efforts that I have. Some people that are watching from existing Green Offices, existing sustainability hubs might get inspired in order to improve the work of the existing hub. Or then those of you where you say, okay, our university doesn't have anything like this yet, you might say, okay, I want to go ahead and establish such a, such a sustainability hub, such a green office. That's what we're going to do today. And we do it in a way that you will all be muted during the presentation. And then later on, you can ask questions by unmuting yourself or asking questions within the chat. And I'm going to be talking today. So my name is Felix. I'm one of the co-founders of Routability and the first Green Office in Maastricht. And Anselm is also here. He is facilitating. So he's basically in the chat, um, making sure that everything runs smoothly. And the two of us work for an organization called Routability. And our vision is that the critical mass of students graduating from European universities become sustainability change makers. And we do that by promoting the Green Office model, but also by giving workshops and consultancy advice for people that want to set up such a sustainability hub. And we're a nonprofit social business and have been around for five years and have already won a couple of prizes for the work 
that we are doing. So let's get going. Um, a short introduction into the Green Office model. So basically the, the promise of a Green Office is that it helps you to improve student leadership on sustainability issues within the institution. It helps you to enhance the collaboration between students and staff. So sometimes there are student initiatives that are doing their thing and then institutions have one sustainability manager or a whole sustainability team that are doing their thing. But the, the promise of the Green Office model is to combine these two things and then help people to work together. And also such a Green Office can help to create additional capacity. So changing an institution and banning sustainability is a lot of work. And oftentimes people feel that there is not enough time, not enough resources to do that. And of course, the notion of um, visibility. So a lot of institutions are already doing lots of things, but they're not so visible yet to students. And such a green office can become a central platform, a hub where people can go to that's visible, that has a tangible office space, an online website where people can see what is going on, where they can connect. So these four things are the basic promise that the green office model tries to give. Now, what exactly is such a green office? So we define the green office as a sustainability hub that empowers students and staff, as well as initiates its own activities to advance sustainability within the university and beyond. And there you can see different green office teams from Eindhoven, Ghent, and Kaiserslautern. So it's already spread to, to different countries. And within this mission statement of the, the green office, so it's a very generic one, you can see that it focuses on this notion of empowering as well as doing empowering others to act as well as doing things by itself and also to advance sustainability at the institution so that can be done yeah, by focusing on the whole institution's approach so education research operations community and governance or saying we want such a sustainability hub such a green office that just for instance focuses on sustainability student engagement it's completely possible so there are different focuses that you can set, set with your green office when you establish one. And the first green office started in 2010 at Maastricht University. It was already a long time ago. And I was one of the students that worked in the green office for two years. And then in 2012, we saw, okay, this is a really cool model that we have here. Um, let's set up rootability with this idea of bringing the Green Office model also to other institutions. And then the Green Office model spread. In 2013, Exeter in Greenwich in the UK adopted a model, Utrecht University. 2014, more universities joined. And then in 2015, we had a, a big jump and also won the UNESCO Japan Prize in Education for Sustainable Development. And then in the boxes, you can see all the different cities. Uh, where universities or University of Applied Sciences established a Green Office. And now in 2016, 2017, we managed to uh, inspire 26 universities, Universities of Applied Sciences, to set up such a, a Green Office in six different countries across Europe. So the largest focus is still the Netherlands and Germany and Belgium, but also now in Italy and Sweden and the UK, there are more Green Offices popping up. Now, what is the, the essence of all these different green offices? So now, in this slide, you can see something that we call the, the impact chain. Um, so starting with the long-term societal impacts, what do, are green offices, what do they try to achieve? So green offices can focus on making sure that students become sustainability change maker. So that's a long-term societal impact, as well as the focus on institutional change, that universities become places where sustainability is taught, lived, and research. And in order to achieve those long-term societal impacts, they focus on intangible outcomes in the medium term. So with regards to students, it's a lot around building awareness, building competencies, assisting with lifestyle cho choices. And then with institutional change, it's around reorienting the curriculum, research, operations, and governance for sustainability. And you can already see here, green offices some green offices have a bit more of an emphasis on, on student engagement and some have a more of an em emphasis on organizational change towards sustainability. So in a sense, the model is very flexible, what you, what you can focus on. But all green offices then have similar activities that they do. Um, they 
I'm going to also explain it later a bit more in depth. So they inform, connect, support, and initiate as activities. And then in order to do that, Green Office have a dedicated organizational model. So it's a diverse team of students and staff that leads such a, a Green Office, normally five to eight students as well as one staff member. Then there are lots of volunteers engaged in the Green Office and then you know, partners with the institution and beyond that partner with the Green Office to implement projects. Then very important, the Green Office has top-down backing through the executive board that gives the Green Office a mandate to work on sustainability and also a budget for two to three years to, to get going. And then of course the office space, the physical space where students and staff can come to and then also the online presence through a website. Um, and then very important also the learning culture within the team that students and staff within the Green Office constantly learn about sustainability but, and also organizational change and that the Green Office itself also becomes a hub within the institution where students and staff can go to that want to learn more about sustainability. So that is the, the dedicated impact chain um, and every Green Office looks a bit different but everyone orients themselves along that impact chain. And in the next slides, I'm going to outline a bit more what are outcomes that Green Office have already achieved, what do we know more about the activities that they do, and then three case studies from the inputs that they use. So Maastricht University Green Office has been around the longest, and there were already quite some studies that were made on the Green Office with regards to qualitative and quantitative changes. So with quantitative changes, we could see that the uh, Green Office successfully lobbied the institution to increase the amount of organic food, to put a proper um, recycling policy in place for e-waste, and then also to establish solar cells on all roofs where this is technically feasible. So the electricity consumption yeah, of the solar cells is not so much of the total electricity consumption, but still now it's, yeah, solar cells are there where um, that is needed. And then with regards to the qualitative changes, so there were a couple of master theses that were written about that topic, that the Green Office improved the strategic governance framework. So the Green Office lobbied for a sustainability vision, a roadmap, and a policy that all these things were put in place um, in order to guide sustainability within the university. And then also there were was one study done around the professional competencies that students acquire as being part of the Green Office. And then there is very clear evidence that the Green Office really improved that student engagement on sustainability as well as student and staff collaboration. So this is just Maastricht University Green Office is one case study of the different outcomes that the Green Office can achieve. Then with regards to the activities, what do we actually mean by Green Office informs, connects, supports and initiates and what are some of the activities that are being done. So with regards to informing that's something that's very important, a lot of universities are really big with 20 or 30,000 students and then the Green Office can collect um, overviews of or Green Office collect overviews of the existing sustainability courses. They write sustainability reports or they inform students through by organizing lecture series around sustainability and running campaigns. So it's around informing about what is going on at the institution, what is sustainability and why is this relevant for you. And the connecting part is also very important, especially at institutions where there is already a lot of stuff happening, but people don't necessarily work together. The Green, Green Office organizes networking events, or they provide the database of the different initiatives at the institution. And then very important also organizing this liaison function, so that whatever a student or a staff has a question, he or she can just go to the, the Green Office and then the, the Green Office can connect the student and staff to the person who can potentially ask, answer that question. Then also with support, it's a very important function. So a lot of sustainability managers mainly implement their own projects, but they don't have the time and energy to support other students and staff that want to do something. And their green offices run volunteering programs. So that's something that was piloted at the green office at the Free University of Amsterdam or they provide project support, so there's one student in the Green Office who then supports students, gives them feedback, gives them advice if they want to run projects. And then also the micro grants and trainings for sustainability student initiatives. Project support can also be for staff members, 
So for instance, a staff member wants to organize a sustainability conference, but don't, doesn't know whom to invite, whom, how to organize this, then the Green Office can help with that. Or writing funding applications, so there are many ways for the support function. And then also the initiation. So that's everything yeah, where the Green Office is, says, okay, this is important, this should be done, and then lobbies for it within the institution. So green offices have lobbied for solar cells on the rooftops for more organic catering, or the green office initiated a new sustainability honors course in minor with a staff member, and then this whole notion of sustainability policies. Um, this is also where lots of green offices are now more and more working on because they see that a lot of the bottom-up action doesn't necessarily lead to a lot of changes and also policies need to be put in place. So these are just some examples from what the different green offices have been doing on these different areas. Now let's look into the, the inputs. So we have three cases here from Maastricht in the Netherlands, Hildesheim in Germany and then Utrecht also in the Netherlands. Let's for instance look first at the team. So Maastricht Green Office has eight student employees that are paid 14 hours per week and that work together with the environmental coordinator of the team of the university who has a half-time position, and also a PhD student as part of the Green Office one day a week in order to work um, with the team. So it's a very diverse team, also involving lots of student volunteers. Then in Hildesheim, um, the team is a bit smaller, so they have six students being paid five hours, per also a volunteer, um, a lot of the time on top of that. And then the Green Office has one dedicated full-time staff member who's a research associate working within the team. And then in Utrecht, it's six student interns, one Green Office coordinator, and then lots of volunteers again working with them. And then the focus of these Green Offices is different. So Maastricht and Hildes and very much take that whole institution's approach because there has been, yeah, the, the Green Office is the sustainability office of the institution, whereas in Utrecht, Utrecht has a dedicated sustainability team, so three staff members that focus on sustainability within the institution, and then the Green Office very much focuses on the student engagement part, which the staff members are not doing. So that's also an option for you if you already have a sustainability team, just put a student-led sustainability hub next to it, which then does a lot of the work on communication and student engagement and collaboration there. And then also the institutional support that they get is um, lots of differences in the budget ranging from 80 to 160 um, and then also the green offices are part of the institution and then anchored within the organic realm of the organization and that can also be very different so from facility services to being part of a faculty or sustainability program team that directly reports to the university president there are many ways on how green offices can be integrated within the university and then in general we can say that the budget of the green offices varies a lot. So there's some green offices that have a 30,000 euros budget, others have 200,000 euros budget. And that very much depends on yeah, how, how big the green office is, how many ambitions they have, and also how willing the university is to invest into sustainability. So this is yeah, some inf more information on the outcomes, um, on the activities, and also the inputs. And you can just post your questions in the chat and we'll get to that in the discussion. And the point is, yeah, there are also a couple of risks that you should be aware of when establishing a green office. And these are the things like that the institution might not take the green office very seriously. So they might say, okay, it's a couple of students and a staff member just running around doing some small scale projects, but it's not a very serious effort. So that's something that green offices need to counterbalance, mainly through professional work and by showing very tangible benefits of their work over time. Then another risk is, it is a problem of a lot of sustainability offices and sustainability managers. The institution says, okay, we have now the green office that works on sustainability and yeah, we, nobody else needs to do something. So that's a very important thing that the green, offices, green office mainly understands itself as a process facilitator that supports others in order to do something. 
um, and then yeah also puts responsibility on their shoulders and engages them then another thing is um, a green office doesn't have any authority over yeah changing buildings changing light bulbs changing the curriculum so these are not these are areas where the professor where the staff members are responsible for facility services or institutes and then it's very easy if something goes wrong to just blame the green office um, on that so that's also something where green offices sometimes struggle with and when they need to be careful that they very clearly outline um, that there are also other actors who are responsible for sustainability and when things are going wrong or, or when there's not a lot that's being achieved that's not on to blame then, of course, one challenge is that yeah, there are five to eight students within the team, and uh, the the goal is that the students stay at least one year within the green office, and that there are overlapping transition periods, and then also that those transition periods are facilitated by workshops and very good knowledge documentation. But sometimes green offices struggle with that, um, so that's also a key risk that there needs to be very focused on recruitment and then organizing the transition period very well and then last but not least it's one risk can also be that there is unclarity about the role of the green office within the organization this is especially one challenge when there are already lots of other actors working on sustainability that there is a question so what is the added benefit of a green office so it's something that needs to be addressed during the design phase of the green office that you need to be very careful around yeah, how do we position the green office? What is it actually going to do um, in order to have stronger role clarity and also to constantly communicate that to people what the green office is actually for and what the added benefit is. So just in order to outline these five risks, so they are real risks. Um, the green office is not a, something that can solve all the problems that an institution has to become sustainable. Um, we are the biggest fan of the green office model and at the same time also the biggest critics of it. Um, and these are a couple of the things that we've seen to play out in action. You should be very aware when you design your own green office to do to address those. And of course, we can help you in the process. Now, if you then say, okay, this is a really cool thing. This is a really nice model. I want to go ahead to establish my own sustainability hub. Um, we normally see five steps that people take in order to establish one. And this is now one of the, the last slides. So first is around forming an initiative. So finding students and staff that want to work on sustainability, that think that this is a cool, cool model, and then have a team of four or five students and staff that want to go ahead with that. Next is the discovery phase that you first understand your organizational context in order to see yeah, what's already happening, who's already active, what are some of the strengths and weaknesses that we have, and then at the same time understand the green office model very well. So for instance, you can visit a green office that's near you, you can Skype with us, we can host a workshop at your institution so that you understand more about the model. Then it's about adapting that model to your own local context. So first trying to see what is actually the impact that we want to achieve, what are the outcomes that we want. And then being very clear what kinds of activities and also inputs do we need for our green office in order to create the desired change that we want to have. So basically adapting that impact chain to your own institution. And once you're done with that, um, it's around writing a proposal. So our green offices are funded by the institution, so they require a formal proposal. So there can be two pages or 20 pages depending on what your institution needs and wants um, to read about and then this proposal is then later handed in to a funding body within the institution. So it can be the executive board, it can be commission for innovation uh, or commission that has funds for improving quality of education. And then depending on how supportive people are of sustainability, of student-led change, or also of, um, of yeah, this green office model in general, you need to do more or less lobbying. So that's what we mean here with engaging people and building alliances within the institution. So some green offices are established within half a year, 
because the executive board says, okay, this is a really cool project, we want to have a green office, and then say to the sustainability coordinator and group of students, okay, you go and work it out. Um, so they can go really quick and there doesn't need to be a lot of engagement and lobbying being done to establish the green office. And then other institutions, it's much more of a difficult bottom-up process that um, yeah, a group of students says this is a cool thing and then they yeah, struggle for one year, one and a half uh, to get the proposal going, find a source of funding. So there, the whole process can take, take longer. Um, and then yeah, the end result is submitting that proposal that you wrote to the commission, to the executive board, who can then give you funding for a period of two to three years and the mandate and then formally establish the green office. So that's the, the whole process. Um, and we also have a dedicated guide and more materials on that. Now, and this is basically where you can, we're coming now to the end of the presentation and there are many more ways in how you can learn about the, the Green Office model. So we have lots of materials on our website, so you might have already checked them out, but there are more of them to see. Then we have regular event, events, webinars, um, that you can basically learn about when you sign up for Facebook. And then if you have any questions and after this webinar want to establish a Green Office at your institution, just send us a couple of emails um, with your questions and then we can set up a, an initiation call with you and then see based on that what are the next steps that we can take. So we have a dedicated process there that involves um, a series of workshops, advice on how to write a proposal. So there is an established process that we can take in order to support with that. Um, and something that always works really well, go on our website under Green Office Movement and then you have an overview of all the existing green offices. And then I would highly encourage you to see if there is a green office or an initiative that wants to establish a green office near you. And then you can just go and visit them and learn more about how the green office there works. And then, yeah, that's a great way to inspire people and to kickstart an initiative that wants to establish a green office. So that was so far the, the input side. Um, thank you very much for listening. Now we have some minutes for questions. Um, and you can do that in two ways. So you can either unmute yourself or simply type the question within the chat. Okay, so Claudia, you wrote a question there. So is there a governance model, um, like you mentioned in your 2016 publication? Can you please specify that question a bit? What do you mean by that? And you can unmute yourself if you click on the, the microphone button. Sorry, I, I couldn't do Sorry, on my machine it didn't work, so I'm, I'm using cameras. It, it was actually a question by the environment officer in my university, um, because she said, basically, is, is there a governance structure or some advice of how best to run it? You used some of the slides and the diagrams to help. I just wondered also whether there's a little bit more also explaining why in, in, in different governance models that um, different universities have applied so that we in a way can pick or suggest something that would work for us. 
Yeah, so that's a good question. Thanks for that. So we are currently um, running, we just got a project approved that we can look at all the 26 existing green offices and then understand how they are embedded within their institution. And then based on that, we can then we will publish a research report that outlines how the different 26 green offices are embedded within their institutions and how they're being governed. So that's something that you can then expect by, by summer. So it's something that we don't have yet. Um, on our website, we have one study that we did in 2012 that outlines a different, that outlines um, the governance model of five green offices. So that was a very limited number we had back then. Um, if you don't want to wait until summer, Something that could work is if you go on our website and then click through um, yeah, three or four websites of green offices in order to learn a bit more about how they're set up and how they're being governed. So that could also, also be a way to do that. Or if you just have a separate call with us, then we can better understand how a university works and how a green office might look like there. Great, thank you. So there's a question, and does the staff leader of the Green Office must be a scientist in sustainability issues? Um, no other person, okay, so we see from Green Office that the staff members are different people. So some are existing sustainability managers, and then they say, okay, we want to have a Green Office, and then they take the existing sustainability manager and then put yeah, five student employees around it and then rebrand the work that they have been doing so far. And then in most cases, yeah, those are people that do not do, uh, know a lot about um, energy efficiency, all these operational issues. Um, and there's one German university now where one of, the, one of the, the staff members is actually scientific staff. But within the Netherlands, most of them are actually sustainability managers, a part of facility services. Um, and within Italy, they also have more scientists who are part of the green office more professors um, so there are pros and, and cons to to that um, in the ideal case if it's possible to get two staff members so one one person who's from facility services or the estates teams who knows a lot about operations and energy and, and waste and then one person who is actually a scientist with a phd who knows a lot about and sustainability education and sustainability research. And if those two people can join the Green Office together with the students, then you have a very strong team that then can work within those different dimensions of the university, education, research, operations, and community. Um, yeah, so there is no general guideline on who the staff member needs to be. Just what's really important is that the person needs to be enthusiastic about sustainability, willing to work with students, and then also already know a lot about the, the institution and then how to play different people within the institution in order to create change. So that is an answer to, the, to your questions. Yeah, so what are the most important issues of sustainability in higher education from the, from the student perspective? Um, so that's a fairly, yeah, it's a, a broad one, so I'm trying to answer it in the way what, with regards to sustainability at a university, what do a lot of students within green offices care about? And you see lots of students um, that care about food, what's being done in the cafeteria, the mensa, so there are also lots of projects um, around that. Then a lot of projects around awareness raising and behavior change and a lot of projects around yeah, that students want to help other people get an overview of what's actually happening at the institution. There are unfortunately not so many projects specifically around embedding education within the curriculum um, that's being done by students or also sustainability research. And it's mainly the case because a lot of students, yeah, they're not very familiar within sustainability education or sustainability science. So they would require some more guidance from staff who know about that or then dedicated training around these issues. We also did an overview of the different 
projects that Green Office were working on in 2016. Um, that's also something we can send around and you get a bit more of an impression what people have been working on. There was another question by Mark Spencer. So you mentioned continuity and quality loss. Do you have any advice on re-establishing a sustainability group? Um, so I'm not sure what you mean by re-establishing here. If you could specify, that would be nice. Otherwise, generally what's being done in order to, or what we advise green offices to do in order to establish the continuity and the word quality loss is that each semester, so that students stay a minimum of one year because it takes at least two to three months until they are part of the green office. Then that green office actually recruits students that have been volunteers um, because they already know more about the green office itself. And that when there is a team transition, that there is always a workshop um, or a weekend seminar where the outgoing students as well as the incoming students are, are all together and then yeah, exchange knowledge, exchange everything that they have been doing. Um, and then also very clear documentation. So the coordinator there plays a very important role that the outgoing students write down everything that the new incoming students that learn about it. So especially, uh, the, that's why the staff coordinator is so important in such a green office, because he or she allows for that continuity over time. And especially relevant for the recruitment and then the team transitions. That's a good question. Yeah, so it's a very good one here. So it seems that green office are dealing with environmental issues, or are green office also dealing with social issues like poverty, disability, and fair trade? Um, so that's an interesting one, and that very much depends on how the institution understands sustainability. So now we're working with one university of applied sciences that wants to set up a social impact hub. So there the focus is very much on corporate social responsibility and then the social socioeconomic issues. Whereas most green offices, yeah, as you write there, are mainly focused on these environmental issues. And this is mainly the case because nobody else within the institution takes this up yet. And the executive board and people within the organization find that it's important to have a dedicated team work on that. So for instance, a lot in Germany, yeah, lots of universities, they also have um, people that work on gender equality, um, yeah, support people with um, work and, and life balance or diversity issues, family issues, and health. So those people that work on these social issues, in some cases, they're already existing, but nobody then yeah, is there to take responsibility of the environmental stuff. So that's why they focus on it. Um, there are just now some more green offices that take up the issue of fair trade. So in Eindhoven, they just successfully helped the university to get a fair trade certification, and that's also possible. And also, if you don't want to call it green office, because green in itself already gives this idea that it's about environmental issues, you can also call it sustainability hub, and then get that focus much more clear on, on these other issues to work on it. Okay, great, maybe we can have one or two more questions. I think all the others in the chat have been answered so far. One uh, sponsors. Okay. The university. Also, there was one on, on who are the sponsors of the Green Office within the university. So that's a good one. So successful. Oh, sorry, there's uh, another one popping in. Um, so let me first answer the one on, the, on sponsors. So the, the sponsors are staff members who care about sustainability and want to work with a green office on that are really key to create an impact. Um, and the fascinating thing is that the, the sponsors can come from all angles. So that's why it's important that at a, once a green office is established, that um, the green office does a stakeholder tour. Um, maps 30 to 40 people to talk to, and then just makes a round, talks to the energy manager, talks to professors, people from the executive board, student representatives, and really see, okay, who's already working on sustainability, what are their needs, and how can we work together with them? And then there are fascinating collaborations that, that emerge. So for instance, in, in Kaiserslautern in Germany, the Green Office 
got a very strong collaboration with the with the sports department um, because there was yeah a couple of people that are already working on sustainability they were very passionate about it and then also the sports department hired three student interns to work specifically on sustainability in sports so that's a great collaboration that emerged there or that then professors work with the green office in order to set up sustainability courses these kinds of things so there's lots of um, collaborations that can emerge through the specific sponsorship of people. There's another question. Yeah, so that's a really good one from Bologna. So how to implement it on a multi-campus university. So that's yeah, a struggle for quite some universities. And then Something that could be done is that you first focus on who is actually the largest campus, where are the most people, where is the biggest impact. And then you can have the physical green office established there and then have a pop-up green office so that you are present one day a week at the other campus locations and that you have a, a room there or that you put up a, a table in front of a building or have a container or whatsoever. Um, and then that way you have one strong basis, but are also present at the other campuses. Then if the other campuses are really big, um, and very far away, then it makes sense also to establish a sustainability hub um, on that dedicated campus or to have a team there. And then this connection with the, with the university and municipality is also a, a very good one. So far, most green offices have focused on change within the institution and not within the city um, because most universities yeah, are really big by themselves but I think also a great way can be to try the model out and, and link it with the city um, so that's a, a good one let's take the last question here any advice on open source software to share ideas reports data without too many specific computer skills um, I'm not specifically know what you Mean, mean by that so yeah a lot of the green with regards to the the internal management that green office is used in the software is there are yeah that they work on google um google drive or they have microsoft um one drive not just just a dropbox to save all all the data and then one whatsapp group for the whole team or a facebook group for the team um and then work through that and then for yeah for online meetings they use Skype so basically the classical open source software that's that's available okay so um, thank you very much for your attendance um, we will send around the slides as well as the recording so that you can watch it again and yeah if you have any questions um, email me and then we can see to, get, to be more specific how to get the green office going at your institution um, we are also planning to have a dedicated follow-up call that will very much focus on the lobby phase of the green office so that one was very much now about getting introduction into the green office and we have a dedicated webinar also on, on this topic how to lobby for it and this is something that we're planning to organize in four weeks, uh, four to six weeks. And then we'd also invite you again to that, that you can participate and then learn more how what the actual steps are for the lobby process. And then thank you very much um, for listening and your attendance. And then we will be in touch. Thank you. Bye-bye.